This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, everyone. Afrelechen Adar. This Shabbos is ready. Shabbos Mavarchem Chodesh Adar Beis. So we have to be Marbe Besimcha. So that's why we're here today to learn Taira Pukude Hashem Yisharim Nesam Chilev. So we're learning Sefer Tzifanya, Parak Aleph, Pasuk Yud Zayin. Sefanya, Parak Aleph, Pasuk Yud Zayin. Says the Navi, again, this is a Nevoah about the impending Chorben of the Bayes Rishon. I will let set siege to man. Rashi says that refers to the Adam li Yisrael to Klal Yisrael Hakruim Adam, which are called Adam. Right? There's a concept that Atem Kruim Adam, Kuchavim Kruim Adam. Only Klal Yisrael is considered Adam and not the Goyim. Even though one would think. And in terms of tracing lineage back to Adam Arishan, one would think all mankind can do so. And in a physical way, certainly everyone can. But spiritually, there is a concept that all the Neshamas that would ever come were, were uh, hanging on Adam Arishan, and that is specifically the Neshamas of Klal Yisrael. So I will set siege to Adam. Adam refers to the Jewish people, Vahochu Ka'ivrim. And they will walk like blind people, kilashem chatau, because they sin to God. Veshupach damam keafar, their blood will be spilled like dust. Ulechumam kaglalam. Ulechumam kaglalam. Says the Ibn Ezra, Ulechumam kaglalam. What does the word lechumam mean? Says the Ibn Ezra, it's a very unusual word. There's no Hebrew word lechumam. And therefore the Ibn Ezra says, besaram. Their flesh will be poured like dung. But in what language does Luchuma mean flesh? Belashon Yishmael. In Arabic, the word Luchuma is flesh. V'chamoyu, likewise, says the Ibn Ezra. Bayamter Alemoy Belchumay. Now, it is certainly of note that the Tanakh, which is written in Lashon HaKodesh, would use an Arabic word. I mean, here the Ibn Ezra is saying, Ulechumam does not have meaning in Lashon HaKodesh. Instead, it is, it is Arabic. Ulechumam Kaglalim. Well, please take a look. I have a, a booklet, courtesy of Yosef Farblitz. He made a copy for us this morning. Um, so the Abar Benel comments on this uh, perush of the Ibn Ezra, So it's uh, page Kuf Ayin Vav. Um, it's the uh, at the end of Pasuk Yud Zayin. It's in the left hand column on the first page. The left hand column on the first page. And um, he says, Ulechula Ulechumam Keglalim Pershuam Afarshim Shebesaram Yia Keglale Tsayas Adam. That their flesh will be like the dung and the excrement of man va'amru and the mefarshim say shalachuma mulashan aravi shakar and labasar lachem says the abarbanav lo yadati lama lo yoymer hanavi dvar v'lashan ha'kodesh I don't know why the navi did not say his words in lashan ha'kodesh v'yivchar lashan ha'arbim instead he chooses the lashan of yishmaelim and therefore, the Barbanel disagrees with the Ibn Ezra. He says, The Yoyser Nacha and the Farsh would be more correct to explain, Luchuma Milashon Lechem Umachal. Kalaymer should be Yoysam in Matsar when they are in siege. Yea, Luchuma Umachalam Tame Kegilalait Sayasa Adam. That when they're in siege, their bread will be Tame. What does that mean, their, bed, their bread will be Tame? In other words, when a siege is set to them, their bread will be uh, ritually unclean. The, the Arabim's bread? No, 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 no. Now the, Ibn, the Abba Arminel is arguing on the Ibn Ezra and he's saying this is not Lashon Aravi, this is Lashon Kaidash. Ah. saying the Jewish people's bread will be like dung, they'll have to eat food, which is Tameh. But the Ibn Ezra learns that this is an Arabic word. So I want to point out, I mean, just as a defense for the Ibn Ezra, how it's even possible to say that there's a word in the Tanakh that's not in Lashon Kaidash. 
Why in the world would it pick an Arabic word? So I uh, direct your attention to the Apostolic at the end of Parshas Bay. Vahaya la ois al yadcha. Should be a sign on your hand. So what does the word taita fais mean? So Rashi says, Tfilin. And why are Tfilin called taita fais? The Al Shem Shehem Arba Batim, because there are four uh, stations, Kruy and Taita Fais. Tat the Kaspi Shtayim, Pat the Afriki Shtayim, Tat in Caspian is two, Pat in African is two. And therefore, Taita Fais is Tfilin. Now, since when does the Torah write uh, in Caspian? Since when is the Torah for Africans? Even though the truth is we are the true African Americans. Because only we actually came from Africa. We don't come from South America. But that's a different discussion for a different time. Maybe, uh, but <laughs> maybe he's telling us that in the colors, you know, that's where we'll be partially. We should understand what it means in times of the colors too. Why would the Torah choose to use Caspian words? So here, Rashi seems to be utilizing the same thing that Ibn Ezra did. Ibn Ezra said, Luchumam is Arabic for flesh. And here, Rashi is saying, Kat, Taita Fais, is Kat, um, Pat, Kat, um, in African and in Caspian. So I once saw, I believe it was in the Maral, that in all these situations, it's a Hebrew word. Taita Fais is a Hebrew word. And Lechumam is a Hebrew word. Yeah, but we don't answer like this. Originally, Adma Rishon spoke Lashna Kodesh. The 70 languages that were created, Yesh Lachkar, let's, let's investigate now. Are they new invented languages? Is Japanese, is Italian, are these invented languages? Or is it merely a discombobulated Lashna Kodesh? In other words, when the Yubanish Shalom was Mavalbel the Lashain, it is very uh, reasonable and perhaps it is even true that what Hashem did was He merely discombobulated Lashon HaKodesh to produce different languages. And each language is just a formula of... In fact, um, I know somebody who's writing a thesis on how there are 70 different permutations you could do to a Hebrew word to make 70 other words. For example, you could do it backward. You could do it... Uh, even and then odd. You could, there are many ways to, to, to mumble a language. So, uh, in fact, there are many Hebrew words that if you, many English words that really could be, the etymology is Hebrew. You know, uh, the obvious ones, sack, right? Sack. Where does the word sack come from? Sack. Sack cloth is a sack. Or uh, my grandfather likes to say, what do you call somebody who is uh, cruel, without any mercy? Ruthless. 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 Rus was the mar- great Merachim. Someone who is uh, cruel and achzari is ruthless. I once thought, you know, how do you say uh, scales in Hebrew is kaskasim? So it just scales backwards, right? Kas, sak, scales. Or fins, snapier. Fins is snapier, backwards. So there are many words that you could claim or perhaps uh, make the case that their etymology is Lashon HaKodesh. So what, what, what Chazal mean that toita uh, fois, tat and pat, in, is two and two in Caspian and in African. The answer is it's two and two in Hebrew. It's just right now, nobody uses tat and pat in Hebrew as two. But the proof that it does mean that is the fact that in other languages it means that. And it originally do, did come from Lashon HaKosh. Okay. So that's the first offering. Let us continue. The last Pasuk in the Parak. Gam Kasbacham. Gam Kasbam. Also their silver. Gam zahavam, also their gold. Lo yuchal lehatzilam, cannot save them. Biyay mevras Hashem, on the day of God's anger. Uveish kenasai, and in the fire of His jealousy, teyachel kala aretz, the whole earth will be consumed. Ki chala, because He will make an end. Ach nivhala, an abrupt end. 
Yasa he will make is Kol Yoshevei Haaretz to all the inhabitants of the land. So in fact, here... Chala is an end, and if Chala means suddenly. Not only will the end come, but the end will come abruptly. So why didn't the... So what is the Chala hand to it? And if Allah is suddenly, but suddenly what? Suddenly you win the lottery? No, suddenly you will end. Oh. Okay, so, okay. Now, Rabbi Isai, we begin Parak Bez. Parak Bez begins with a very famous Pasuk. A very important Pasuk in general. Um, Pasuk says like this. Hiskoi Shushu. Literally, Hiskoi Shushu means gather yourselves. Fakoi And correct your deeds. Hagoi, the nation, loy nechsaf, without desire. So gather yourselves and correct yourselves. What does this mean? Let's start with Rashi. Hiskoi shushu, gather yourselves. Could I have two batteries, please? Hiskoi shushu, gather yourselves, vakoishu. Now, the language of hiskoi shushu. What's the root of his shushu? Kash. Kash, like straw. That's why it means to gather, like you gather straw. His laktu, gather, vi asvu yacha, and gather together, kamoy le koishesh kash, to gather straw. The koishu, and. So gather yourselves like straw of a koishu. A koishu means and correct your deeds. Says Rashi, ma'asechem. Hishbu ma'asechem ladas koinchem. Equate your actions. Make your actions on par with the desire of your creator. Ah. However, now Rashi quotes a Gemara in Baba Vast. This is a very important Gemara. The Chazal Darshu kishoid atzmacha v'yachar kach kishoid acherem. Before you correct others, Correct yourself. Hiskoi shushu, correct yourself. Vakoi and then correct others. In other words, in order for a person to be worthy to correct others, they need to, they themselves, be flawless. They need to be free of the need to be corrected. So hiskoi shushu, kishoyt atzmecha, vakoi and then correct others. Asu shneim lashon hekish. Adam hama... Both words mean a language of equating. Hamaj va'atzmoi, someone who makes himself equal, meyasher darkoi. So here the Torah is, is uh, warning us that before you correct others, one needs to correct themselves. Then the Pasuk says, Hagoy loy nechsaf, the nation that does not desire. What does it mean, the nation that doesn't desire? The nation that doesn't desire what? Why are the Jewish people being called the nation that does not desire? Says the Targum Yonis of Menuziel, Amo Dulachamid Lameisav La'iraisa. The nation that does not desire to learn Torah. That's the critique over here. The nation that does not want to study Torah. Rashi also says, Targum Yonis and Dulachamad Lameisav La'iraisa. Pasuk Beis. Before the decree is born, Rashi says, Before the decree comes, You'll become like chaff before the day passes. Before it doesn't come upon you, the fierce anger of God. Before it does not come upon you. The day of God's anger. Says Rashi. Rashi says, This is a abridged Pasuk. Like chaff that passes before the wind. And like smoke that passes before the sun. The Dezeo Targumai shall avar yoim. Tachtirim Yonason to Havoin Daman. Le Kemoitse. 
the Nasha Verucha Kenana the Adi Min Kadam Yoima. Now, what's the difference between the Terem Lo Yovay Alechem Charoin Afashem and the Terem Lo Yovay Alechem Yoim Afashem? What's the difference between the Charoin Afashem and the Yoim Afashem? Says the Malbum. Beterem is goishushu, beterem yavay aparonius, kidei shalay yavay alechem charoi nafashem, sha'af shi yavay hayoim, even if the day comes, it will not bring anger. And then the Pusik adds, not only will God's anger not come on that day, but that day will not come at all. That day will not even be designated. In other words, do tshuva so that God's anger does not come upon you. Do tshuva, so even the day that was designated for anger will not be such a day. Bakshu es Hashem, seek out God, call Anvei Haaretz, all the humble of the land. Now, according to the Malbim, it's speaking to the tzaddikim. It's not only speaking to the, the multitudes, which are compared to the straw, it's, it's speaking to the tzaddikim. Asher mishpato yipa'alu Says the Malbam That those who go In the chukei Hashem And the mishpatim Seek out Hashem Bakshu tzedek Seek out righteousness Bakshu anova Seek out humility Seek out humility Ulay tisasru Perhaps You will be Saved Biyoimaf Hashem. It wasn't in Ulai Tisasru. What's the lotion of Tisasru? The Radak says Tisasru, you will be hidden. Or protected, the Targum says. Mo'im Yisgain. But that says Radak, this promise was only that they won't die by the sword. But they were not, there were no promises that they will not um, be exiled. Because a decree was already decreed in the times of Menashe, like it's already told to Yeshua Melech that you will be gathered to your forefathers in peace. Okay. Ki Aza Azuva Sia. What does this mean? You will be Aza Azuva Sihia. So Aza usually means strong, but here it refers to the place, the Philistines. Ki Aza Azuva Sihia. Aza, the Gaza, will be abandoned, they will be deserted. The Ashkelon the Shmama, Ashkelon will be a wasteland. Ashdod bat Saharayim. Yigarshua. Ashdod in the afternoon will be chased out. The Ekron Teyakar. Ekron will be uprooted. What's Ekron? Ekron is uh, also a Philistine area. Akron? That was Akron That's further north. Let's see, Rashi. Ki Aza Azuvasiya. If you do this, I will visit punishment on your evil neighbors. Peleshes, the Amoin, Umayav, Kamoshan Navi, Misajan, Vahilech. Like the Navi is enumerating that if we do tshuva, God will visit punishment on our enemies. So Azo will be deserted, Ashkelon will be desolate, Ashdod will be chased out in the afternoon, says Rashi. Ashdod, Shama. Ashdod will be desolate of Tsaraima, Asher Yishodba, Ketev Yigarshua, Ute Utehi Shududa. So this is Rashi trying to explain what is the meaning of Batsaharayim Yigarshua. Rhyme is the noon. 
Yeah, okay. If um, can someone pass me a siddur, is there a siddur here? In Yoshev B'Seser Elyon, which is which capital? 91. It says, So there, in Yoshev B'Seser Elyon, the Yashud B'Tzaharayim. That there's a certain demon, this chapter 91 in Tehillim, we say like this. From Ketev it will fall desolate in the Tzaharayim. That there's a certain demon called Ketev which causes desolation in the Tzaharayim. So when we say over here, Ashtoid Bat Tzaharayim, Yegarshua, Rashi in his first pshat, it means like this, Uvit Tzaharayim in the afternoon, Asher Yashud Ba Ketev, that Ketev causes desolation, Yigarshua. He'll chase him out. An alternative Sharash, he says, Davar Acher Bat Saharayim Yigarshua, Makoy Miret Sainhaya. It was a place of pasture. It was Saharayim Kasha Lotzais, but we know in the afternoon it's very difficult for sheep to pasture because of the the heat of the sun, like in Shashirim we say, Eicha Tarbitz Batsaharayim. Okay. So here we're given a prophecy that if the Jewish people repent, the punishment is going to go on the enemies. Let's see the Abar Ben on, on these Psukim, Pasuk Dalet, Ki Aza Azuva. means according to the Radak, we saw that this is a promise that the Jewish people will be offered some degree of protection, but not complete protection, because the Golos, the impending Golos was already given. Let's see the Radak in this Hakdama to Parak Beis. He says... After Hashem told B'nai Yehuda all the evil that was going to befall them, the Navi himself took the appropriate understanding that what our reaction should be is to do tshuva. Like, here the Abarbanel agrees with the uh, Ibn Ezra. And then the Abarbanel continues. Look in Pasuk Gimel. L'fisha hayu bi rushalayim. Uh, because in, there was in Yehuda and Yushalayim God fearing people although they were small he sang to these Sadiqim who remain in Yushalayim seek out God Now, in Pasuk Gimel, we have an astounding Pasuk, and this is something that we learned in when we were learning Masech the Chagiga. And on this Pasuk, um, where the Navi is talking to the Tzaddikim, he's saying, Bakshu Hashem, seek out God. Ulai Tisasru, maybe you'll be saved. What do you mean, maybe? What do you mean, maybe? If you do tshuva, isn't it for sure? So Rav Ami said, no. When Rav Ami would come to this pasuk, he would cry. He said, all of this and only maybe. Kulei hai v'ulai. All of this and only maybe. In other words, a frightening thing. Here the Navi is telling us to repent. But even so, maybe. Ulai tisasu. It's only a maybe. It's not guaranteed. That's what the Gemara says. So the Barbanel is quoting this Gemara. But the Abba says, 
I don't know why he cried. Rabbi now on the bottom line says, I don't really understand why he cried. The Bnei Yehuda and Yishalayim, they sin so many sins. Says Abar Benel, I don't really get why Rav Ami cried. <laughs> Rav Ami, you see, we understand Rav Ami cried because what Rav Ami is saying is, that look, here the Yibbani Shalom says, do tshuva, do tshuva, and only maybe. So Rav Ami is saying, like, what should I do? Ha, ha, that, that's not very uh, hopeful for me. That's not very comforting. I'm going to try to do tshuva, do, do tshuva, and it's only a maybe. So Rav Ami says, come on, Rav Ami, don't you understand what kind of level the Jewish people sunk to? They had sinned for so long, so long, so long. And now you, hold, you think that if they do tshuva in the last moment, they should be guaranteed to be uh, forgiven. I mean, Ravami, you have to understand, it's not like the Jewish people have been so great. They've sinned continuously for so many generations. That's why it's only Ulai. But if somebody really tries his best and then he does tshuva, then they have a much better shot. So interestingly, the Barbanel is saying he doesn't know why Ravami would cry. So the Abarbanel, in a way, is leaving off with a kasha on Ravami, like he doesn't get why Ravami cried. So, in, de- in defense of Ravami, we have to say and utilize a very important principle, and that is, despite the fact that the Navi is severely castigating the Jewish people, we have to understand that in reality their sin was what we call dake dakais. It was very minuscule. Something that if we would look at, we wouldn't be able to see anything. Like the Gemara says many times, David chata eno ruven chata eno That all the chataim that the Nevi'im heap upon us and that we're severely castigated for, that's because the Nevi'im blow up our sin. They exaggerate our sin. Why? As we're going to see, the Navi Amai says, the Pasuk, Rak eschem yodati, rak only eschem you the Jewish people yodati. You know what yodati means? Literally, I know, but in lashon hakodesh, yedia is referring to love, like vayeda adam eschava ishtai. Hashem says, because I love you, that's why I punish you. With love like that, right? Who needs that? But what does that mean? Very simple. You're walking down the street with your child and he has a little part of his shirt sticking out. And across the street there's some hooligan who looks like he belongs in the zoo. And you scream at your kid! You, how, you walk around like that? With a shirt like that? Well, what are you? A bum? What about that guy across the street? He's a billion times worse. What's the answer? He's hopeless. You don't care about him. What do you care how he dresses and what he looks like? But you love your child and you want to see your child's perfection. So to the, to the father, every imperfection of the child is magnifying. The father is looking at the imperfections of the child under the magnifying glass. Same thing with Klal Yisrael. <laughs> Here, the Chedo Egel, the Kuzari writes, What's the, the Chedo Egel, if we would have done it, it would have been considered a mitzvah. It wasn't Avodah Zarah. They weren't making an idol. They had a Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu wasn't coming down. What are they, how are they supposed to connect with God? Just sit there and think? We don't do that. We go to shul. Why do we go to a shul? Because we attribute that God is found more in a shul than elsewhere. That's heretical. That's, that's apikarsus. The only reason we're allowed to make a shul is because God allows us to. Had we not been allowed to make a shul, had God not authorized us to make a shul, a shul would be Abay For For us to go to a makoim and say God is here more than in my house or more than outside, well, what is that? The answer is Hashem allows such a thing. But had Hashem not authorized... So the only thing wrong with the Egel is they wanted to say... By the way, why did they pick an Egel? They picked an Egel because that's one of the faces on the Kisei HaKavod, a shar. 
So what are they going to pick? An Adam? That would be too idolatrous. They're going to pick a Nesher? It's not kosher. They're going to pick an Ari? It's not kosher. The Shar is the most logical and reasonable choice to pick if you needed, if you needed to have something as a tangible way to connect with Hashem. The what? The Chamor wasn't on the Kisei HaKavah. Yeah, what you say? Oh, front and back. Oh, the front. Oh, you mean that? The Shir. Said the shear was it could be that they didn't intend to make the chamar. They just wanted to make the shah. The back end, you know, sometimes <laughs> doesn't say they tried it. It's they try to make a shah. They put in the piece of paper that said Alei Shah. They didn't didn't say Alei Chamar. Right? But the Kuzari says that had we made the ego, it would have been a big mitzvah. So you have to understand everything in the Tanakh is blown up because of Hashem's love for us. There are no compliments in Tanakh. What? It wasn't rampant in Abu Zara in the Bayez Rishon? L'chaira not. L'chaira was on a very minuscule level. It was on a level of Dakas. I mean the fact that the Pasuk says that Tachas ko. There was Abu Zara, but what exactly that means? Was that outright Abu Zara? The uh, philosophy of Slabotka was that all the Averos mentioned in Tanakh are blown up and exaggerated. Like the Navi itself says, because I love you, that's why I punish you so much. And there are very little, there are very little uh, compliments in the Chumash. In fact, there are no compliments in the Chumash. The only compliments we have in Chumash is from Goyim. Who's going to compliment us? Moshe Rabbeinu. Why would we believe? Why, would, why put that in the Chumash? What our own leader says about us? The Chumash is just full of criticism because it demonstrates Hashem's love. Only compliments! Who says that? A Rasha. Bilam. Why? Because if the Rasha says, then you'll believe it. If, if Moshe Rabbeinu says you're a bunch of tzaddikim, no one's going to believe it. Of course, that's what... Uh... The only thing is, at the end of Moshe's life, he said, you know what, let me tell you how it is. Ashrechem But the rest of the Torah... The rest of the Tanakh. So it could be the answer to Abarbanel's question. Why uh, Ravami was crying. Ravami, what are you crying? Of course it's only Ulai. The Jews had sinned for so many generations. The answer is we have to know what kind of sins these were. These were not outright egregious sins. You know, we, we always consider it. And that's why the, uh, you can't accept the interpretations of the Tanakh, of the Bible critics. Oh, King David, he did this, he did that. The Gemara Masech the Shabbos has interpretations exactly every act that seems to be uh, a wrongdoing of Dora Mach has to be interpreted in the, through the lens of the Tarsha Peh. So maybe that is why Rav Ami was crying. In other words, Rav Ami understood, yeah, yeah, there were sins, but they were sins on a very minuscule level. Okay. Rabbi Say, let's hold it over here. Shkayach. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.